the first thing here on the agenda was uh, <clears throat> this. I think this came from the planning board. Yep. Um, a, and they're calling it a resource replacement fee for solar installations. And this would this would apply to uh, systems that are going in on Chapter 61A land. Um, and I, I think they want. I don't. I don't think they're looking for a heck of a lot of guidance here from us. Only may, maybe only just the whether we think it's a good idea. Um, and I don't know if they want to, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's kind of like the community host agreement payments that the marijuana growers are contributing to the town for, or the consum perceived consumption of a resource, whether it's, you know, needing more police or lower property values or the smell or who knows what, but, um, so anyway, that's, that's what that's about. <clears throat> so um, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I I think this is a recommendation, or this the 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 planning board is looking for some sort of buy-in from the ag committee, and this is specific to uh, agricultural land or prime land or or land of importance. And this would, if that land was used for solar installation, this would be. Um, kind of a, a replacement fee cost, if, the, if I remember it right. Yeah, yeah, sure. And is it a one-time thing or is it a, like the, the marijuana fees are ongoing, right? They're a percentage of sales or something? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I think they're, they're trying to craft this and I don't, Okay. I mean, it, it seems to me that a one-time thing would be a lot simpler to administer yeah because um, i think the in, the installation would happen once so this would be a a one and done or that's my, right. my thought anyway i think it's probably also i mean whatever my my sense of it is that it would probably be smart to tie the fee to the number of panels in the system and not try to tie it to production um which would make it a lot easier to assess at the point of installation. Mm -hmm. um, I know the, the, just the pure uh, value of the electricity that one panel produces in a year is about $45, um, which doesn't take into account any of the tax credits or the uh, energy credits that, that can be sold. Um, so it's, you know, so I, I was just thinking something like $2 a panel um, on, on installation as a, as a reasonable fee. But, you know, certainly there's people on the planning board who will craft something sensible, I think. But I think I, I kind of endorse this. I don't think it's an unreasonable thing. And also seems like the money should be kind of earmarked in a way if possible for uh for APR. Mm. Exactly. That may that may not be possible. I don't Yeah, yeah, maybe something broader like open space or God knows who or God knows what. Yeah. So right. All right, any other discussion on this topic? I don't see why we wouldn't um, at least start off by suggesting that it be earmarked for farmland preservation, okay. open space. If it's if it's not if they're not assessing it, for example, on forest land where somebody puts a solar facility, which I know isn't very likely in Waitley, but does happen in other towns. Yeah, yeah, we we could suggest it, and they could. Somebody could say you can't do that, and, right. but yeah, and then <laughs> let them say no, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, any other comments on that? Not for me. Okay, so just to review, the the AgCom would recommend uh, would recommend or it would. Um, 
support the fees and, per panel endorse. is recommend. Yeah, endorse. Thank you. That's the one we're on. Endorse. And that we recommend, a, 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 as an example, $2 a, a, a panel fee. And also recommend that the fees be used for APR. Right? Yeah. I, um, Why not? Let's shoot for the moon. I don't even... I don't even think I'd put in the two dollar per panel okay. fee at installation. Let Personally, that, yeah. I mean, whatever. Okay. I think I think we're you know I think what we're more being asked is just to kind of endorse the idea that they're yep. they're don't push, they replace. Me, don't so. push your luck. Yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Okay. My only other thought is that it it is it would be infinitesimal in the cost of a big solar installation like that. That's a negligible fee. Yeah. A uh, $2 I would say is, is it, you know, I mean, our system on route five is 2,300 panels. Um, that would have been, you know, if it was two bucks a panel it would have been $4,600. I mean, that, that system was, you know, just under two million dollars to install. So wow. <laughs> so it, it, we're not talking about much. <laughs> I got, I got gotcha. you. All right. Yeah. All right. That's the way I'm gonna frame the minutes on that. Now, Doug, um, do you do you want to respond to the planning board? Go ahead. Yes, Margaret. Even though that's not why I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. I thought you were Margaret. Go ahead. Um, part of it is. If I remember, this was a couple months ago with us. Part of it is to help the incentive for you know, removal when it comes to removal, having this fund in place. So right. because we were originally sold on it saying, oh yeah, the cost of um, recycling the panels will more than cover the cost of removing it. That's not true. We were very yeah. misled. Right. So this is to help that. Okay. So is it, Sarah, to create a town fund? Because I thought the, in theory, isn't the developer responsible for removal and disposal? But this, the idea is to create a fund in case they do not come through. You got it, to protect okay. us. Okay. okay. Well, that is not farmland protection, but it does seem like a good idea. Uh, okay. See, I thought this was for the replacement for a loss of a resource, but okay, whatever. Maybe. Again, this was a couple months ago. Yeah, you know, I think we still uh, endorse it. That's the word I'm hunting for. It's protection so, for the town. And you guys, this very much involves taking, to some extent, valid farmland out of farm use because they really haven't found ways to get a productive crop underneath solar panels yet. Right. Okay. I had an awful lot of talk about it. Yeah, yeah, there has been a lot of talk. Well, well, Sarah, thank you for that clarification. Sorry for butting in. No, 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 that's fine. Um, okay. Uh, any more discussion on that or should, should we move on to the next topic? And that would be the Waitley Agricultural Summary for Open Space Committee. Couldn't even tell you about that or much about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I now I remember what it is. I wrote it. Um, <laughs> it was good. Uh, honest. I, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I think, oh, I know what that is. And to be honest, I'm not even sure who actually asked for it. I think Donna Wiley asked me to do it, but I don't know that it was for the historical commission. It might have been for the open space plan. Yeah, I think it was for the open space. Question plan. mark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the open space committee. Okay. Well, anyway, I don't have it in front of me. I think I might have emailed it to everybody at some point, um, but it was just a revision, one page, maybe five paragraph summary of Waitley Agriculture. And Okay. I remember that now. It was just kind of an update of what uh, the committee or what agriculture looks like in, in uh, Waitley. And who's conducting it? Right, and I think maybe maybe the maybe Donna wanted it for the historical commission, just for a snapshot in time or something yep. like that for the same thing with, 
with the Whateley database, the, the re, that was the same thing. It was just a review of what we had on record and kind of an update with some uh, new farms and some new contact information. Yep, okay, so, yep. So that and that, that takes care of that too. Yep, segues nicely into that next, that third bullet item there on the agenda. Yep. So, you know, and again, that was just something somebody asked me for and I did and I don't now I'm not I'd have to go through a email historical emails to remember but it might have been it was either Judy Markland I think or Donna who wanted who wanted uh that updated yep and and I did that and I think you all maybe saw a copy of it at one time or another and uh, and back in December I had all this Waitley agcom information on a USB that crapped out of me and I lost a bunch of it but I did have just enough to get by and inclu included some of this database information. So I didn't lose quite everything, but I did lose an awful lot. So, yeah. So, okay. The administrative budget review for 2021 and 2022, I can give a, a brief report on that is that we normally get $500 a year from the town as our annual budget. Um, I can't remember the last time that we used any of that money. So it just rolls forward each year. So I will uh, recommend that we have a $500 per year budget for both fiscal 21, which we're in the heart of right now and fiscal 22. Any comments on that? Anybody have anything that they want to spend money on that sh where we should increase our budget? Um. <clears throat> Not, not necessarily increasing our budget. My memory was that it was fifteen hundred. I thought it had gone maybe to that too. I thought it all right. But I also thought we never spent it. So okay. I well, thought the, it went up. Only to... Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say. I, I, I mean, I, I mean, one thought I'm having is that maybe, maybe several years of of uh, unused $500 budgets had turned into 1500. And I thought it, we just returned it to the general fund in general. Budgets, hang on, but let me I, I, the, the only, I think we assisted with some pr printing costs for some posters and pamphlets maybe yeah. for yes. the school, or, you know, but that's the only time I ever remember us Wait. spending any money. I think it, I feel like my memory, which could be wrong, is that our budget went up from 500 to $1,500 uh -huh. for printing either the year we did the map or the year that we did, as Doug, you're remembering those posters about Waitley agriculture. And that then once we were at 1500, they just kept asking us every year, do you want 1500 again? And we would say, yes. You've but got it. That's exactly yeah. right, Margaret. Yeah. I was sure. Uh, I stand corrected. It's fifteen hundred dollars. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Jim. Go ahead. We put an insert in the, the scoop there. Oh yes, right. You know, on the value of farmland versus houses, and you know, and then you look the payback to taxes. Right. Okay. All right. So we should maintain that that fifteen hundred dollar a year budget. Any other comments on that? Uh. I know I, maybe it's I, Margaret and I maybe were the only ones who communicated about it, but uh, uh, our, uh, recently a real a real good guy, good farm worker, good farmer in town, uh, a guy named Fabistino who worked at Chang's died in a in a truck crash in uh, in Belmont, <clears throat> and I, I I would support if it's an appropriate use of the money. Um, making a contribution. I think there's a GoFundMe uh, uh, effort uh, to raise money for for the family that he left behind. They live in Hadley. <clears throat> hey, he, he, he died in Belmont. I thought it is obituary. I believe it was him. Also, was somebody else that worked for Chang. He died in Mexico. It said. Oh, oh well, he he was no. It no. was a crash in Boston okay. or outside of Boston. All right. Yeah. But he was the funeral or there was a funeral in Deerfield, but he's yeah. I believe being returned to Mexico to be buried. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. 
Okay. First question I have is how much do you want to contribute? What would you recommend, group? Anybody I got mean, a number? I'd I'd give I'd give it all. I'd give five hundred. I'd give a thousand. I, you know. Um, <laughs> okay. What, what, what? I don't know. Any, well, anyone else have an opinion about that? Yeah, I'd be very supportive of that, and I have no idea whether it's something we can do. Right. I will email Brian and ask him if we can donate money out of our, out of our fund. But I, I, you know, I'd like to have a number that what we were thinking about for donation. Oh, ask him if we could give a grant. Okay. Sure. And if, unless anyone objects to that or thinks it should be different. I just putting a number out there to have a number out there. Okay. Okay. Uh, Doug, I may check back with you just for details on the name and what, where he worked and what he did. Okay. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. Cool. All right. Let's see. The Canna Select Site Plan Review for LaSalle, Gar uh, LaSalle Drive. That's the marijuana place that's going in. Right. Well, I, I think they're, yeah, they're, uh, they're in the process. Yeah. So I think this, this is another request that came from the planning board, either planning or select board. And they wanted to know whether we were in support of this uh, initiative. So let me hear what you guys have to say. Well, I, I, uh, didn't read every word of the of the 80 page document that was <laughs> that was sent to me <laughs> but i i did read uh <clears throat> sort of the important what i thought were the important bits of it and uh it seems to be a well thought out plan it seems yeah. like they've, they've covered their bases and and if that's the direction that people uh, on LaSalle drive want to go i i support it personally Me too. Thank you, Margaret. I do as well. I mean, you may not like the agriculture, but it's agriculture. And, and anytime that you can support agriculture in your town, you'd better do it. So, uh, anybody else? I'm going to stay out because I, because I, I, I rent land there. So I'm just going <laughs> to stick All right. You know. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. I still appreciate your opinion. Okay. <laughs> <There isn't> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, okay. Doug, Community Preservation Act Committee Report. Anything going on in CPA? Um, no, I mean, not <laughs> that I, I mean, not, you know, to be honest, I missed the last meeting that we had and, and we, they're skipping the March meeting. Um, and we're having an April meeting. So I haven't actually even been attended, you know, virtually a meeting since January. Okay. Um, okay. so other than these things that, uh, have kind of been brought brought to uh, the attention uh is usually that they have a sign up that starts or that that ends in G in december for projects looking for funding to be approved or to be uh presented at the town meeting in april but if they're you know i'm not sure with with covid what's going on with any of these committees so if there's no activity then there's no activity Oh, yeah, gosh. I mean, <clears throat> so, yeah, to, to, you know, to, to be honest, I, I don't, uh, I'm pretty peripheral to the, uh, the function of that committee and, yeah. and, uh, I, okay. <laughs> I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We didn't submit any APRs this year, so we, yeah, we had less reason to be. 
exactly uh, for you stalwart representatives to which is a marvelous segue margaret <laughs> to apr the apr update is that the um fran sobieski's apr is going forward it had to be reappraised which seems to always be oh. the case uh, but the reappraisal did not change the values, which is great because it means the numbers don't change. So I think that's, you know, they're at the stage of getting the town to fill out all the paperwork. And I think that's going to close. The Ashmans, after their barn was wrecked, um, put their APR on pause. Okay. So I don't know, Doug, whether you know any more about what their thinking is, but that one is... It's not ended, but it's not going forward at the moment. Patty's got the right, smoke yeah. detectors going off at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. You can mute yourself, John. Uh, I can. Uh, yes, I certainly can and will. Once I figure out how to do that. Bottom left. Oh, your, Bottom left. Your smoke detectors sound a lot like our smoke detectors. <laughs> Um, I, I think what's going on there is that they, well, I, I know one issue is that they, you know, they lost the barn and they're unsure what, where and what they want to do to replace that storage space. Um, and I, and the other thing I suspect um, only in talking to, to Larry's brother is that they're they're keenly aware of what how in demand building lots are <laughs> and uh, and I think they're a little bit unhappy with the way that land blows across the street um, and I think they're wondering if in fact it is good farmland or there shouldn't be a house or two there so um I suspect once I think what will happen is that once they uh, decide if they want to put a barn back up um, and whether where, you know where on that corner it's going to be, um, then they'll they'll probably reconsider uh, going forward with it. And that's that's all pretty unofficial. I mean, that really is just, uh, you know people standing in a loading dock talking it's you know so i like i say i think it's on hold for that for prime primarily for them to decide what they're going to do about rebuilding a barn yeah okay okay sarah cooper here's your opportunity other business John, you know if, if you uh, if you open the doors and windows, that might stop. We've done that already. <laughs> <laughs> um, I sent a message in the twenty couple days ago, but um, it's and I very much understand the pressures farmers are under, but it really was a lot of topsoil blowing around this past couple weekends. Um, and in particular, my, the people who lease the land behind me, this is the second year they haven't had a particularly awesome cover crop. Um, does Waitley or the state, is there some incentive? Is there a way we can kind of, hey, this is our topsoil. I know you guys educate and I know farming, I believe, I, I know so many pressures, but this was really bad this spring. So I didn't know you were more the experts on state ma the mandates for state and town about cover crops and if there are any, and if there's any thing the people living next to our wonderful fields and farms can do. Sarah, could you could you tell me where you live? I'm on 147 Christian Lane, and Kitchen Garden is behind me and in front of me. In front of me, they have oh. a nice crop of Sudan grass, but behind me, wow! What did they have on there, Sarah, in the fall? 
they kind of do bits and pieces and definitely yeah. something it was fall root crops. Mm -hmm. So I get it. And they're not Jimmy. Jimmy notoriously puts in a late cover crop on his potatoes. There's some other issues going on there. But um, Kitchen Garden hasn't been great with their cover crops with their fall veg. It's fine. Right. I think some of those some of those crops are getting harvested af after the point where a cover crop would even germinate. Yeah. Yep. And this was a hard fall. Wet, 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 and hard to get stuff in. And then winter actually came. A real winter. Right, right. And now it's been dry and windy up until just now. Yes, the mud is rolling off my vehicles. Well, I, I don't know that there's any, you know, I mean, I don't think there's any man, mandatory uh, cover cropping situation. Um, you know, um, it's certainly, I don't think there's, I don't think there are any farmers who are happy to see land blowing. Um, and, you know, I, I know I had, I had kind of suggested to uh, some conventional growers um, that uh, some doing some uh, no-till squash or some or corn or something like that on some on some you know highly wind erodible land uh, might be might be a good thing to try. Um, and I don't know if that had that had work or not, or if if that but that that thought will will be uh, considered, but. Uh, you know, a kitchen garden there near you is organic, and I, I don't know that there's a lot of practical um, no-till options there, you know, especially if they're growing fall fall roots or maybe a spring green and then a fall root, and uh, it's it's an unfortunate, unfortunate thing. Thank you. I just wanted to, it was a hard spring, and we have new neighbors across the street. This is a whole new Oh yeah. Well, for them. So I think we're going to talk to the Ferex and see if, because they still own the piece behind. And if there's something that can be put in the lease, just notification of an attempt at least. So. And that's a problem that we've had in that area for years. If it isn't Christian Lane, it's Michkowski circle where we've yeah. gotten complaints there. Same thing. Is you it's get the wrong road kind road. of weather. I mean, it's that all that straight ass corridor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and just so we know, just so we're talking about the same thing, there were let's see, it was a couple Mondays ago. There, a friend of mine has a farm in Hatfield with a weather station, and he said that that night that there was steady wind gust between forty and seventy miles an hour, and had a high wind gust of over eighty miles an hour. So that's wow. just crazy. I mean, it, it blew some shingles off my house. And then, um, geez, it was, uh, what was it, just this weekend? Or just we had more wind Monday. that took more shingles, yeah, that took more shingles off my house. So I, I, I feel your pain, and I know exactly how bad it is. And if you have the wrong kind of field conditions, and that's coupled with frozen ground and high winds, you're you're in for a for, frozen bear ground excuse me yeah. so dust bowl i feel your pain and it was even worse on the other side of the river over in hadley because the wind starts at uh about the sunderland bridge and and just keeps rolling until you get all the way down into the almost the center of north hadley we're a little so, bit more broken up so yeah you know all those wind breaks that were put there they were put there for a reason yeah you know Sure. So I did notice actually really recently within the last week or so, Tim Wilcox from Kitchen Garden talking on his social media about cover cropping strategies and the challenges of certain, um, you know, certain, I, I think just what Doug said, I, in fact, I think he might have mentioned late roots coming off. Um, and there are some kind of things that they're trying out for some other cropping situations to see if they can get a cover crop on. So I, it is not something that they're, you know, unaware of um, or ignoring, um, but they're 
may not okay. be a good solution. And I, I do think it's got, to me, it seems like it's gotten a little bit more challenging because we're, we're more, we're less likely to get an early killing frost. And so it seems like more and more things end up going quite late into the fall. And then it, it really is too late to, to see the cover crop. Right. Yeah, and when you come in quick. Yeah. Yep. I very thank you, Margaret. I feel good to hear he's really talking about it. And I mean, we saw the Sudan grass right across the street from us, and that was an interesting crop to see in, and it really kept things down. It'll be interesting how they break that up this spring, but that'll enter me while I'm at home working. That's encouraging. At least he's got the the right intentions, you know. May, Things didn't go his way or anybody else's this fall if you if you were trying to sow late cover crop, but yeah. okay. point taken. Thank you guys very much for listening. Thank you for bringing it to Thanks the for committee. Thanks coming, Sarah. Thank you. Take care, all of you. Bye. Good night, Sarah. <laughs> See, I thought she was going to talk about the Waitley 250th. Oops, I should have let her go oh. first. I'm I know. Sorry. I wonder if we should try to make it a practice to add. It always feels a little challenging to say to somebody, why are you here? Yeah, I know. And we could put them at the front of the agenda. <laughs> I know that was probably what I should have done, but. Well, hindsight. Woulda, coulda, woulda. So. Oh, well. I have uh, another agenda item. Go ahead. Um, I got a call from Al Averill, who used to be the state soil scientist uh -huh. at NRCS and is now in one of those sort of strange things that I don't really understand. He's retired, but he's been rehired by American Farmland Trust who's doing some work under contract for NRCS. So he's essentially kind of back working for NRCS. Um, yeah, he's doing, doing the same thing he retired from. Right, that's what it seems like. And he's getting a government email, but me, and none of that is, that's all neither here nor there. The project that he's working on is this, or among them, is a project to identify what they're calling soils of local importance, which are mm -hmm. soils that are not prime, they're not soils of state importance, but they might have been in active agricultural use and be considered important you know, to a particular business or in a particular town. And they feel like if those soils get designated a soil of local importance, that is something that could be used if that landowner wanted to preserve that land. So you could try to make a case to the APR program that it's true, this is not prime soil, but it's a soil of local importance. And so, um, you know, they ought to allow, they ought to approve it for APR. Um, and I, to tell you the truth, when I first heard about this, I. I just thought it wasn't that relevant to Waitley because so many of, so much of our soil is so good. But of course right. there is, you know, all of West Waitley and there are people farming up there. And if the Mahars or somebody wanted to put some of their land in APR, this might, you know, help them do that. Um, so I guess they did it in Hatfield is the first town where they've sort of made an official designation. Um, and Al felt that since Waitley's, you know, next to Hatfield, it might make sense to just sort of keep moving up the river. Um, so what, if we are interested in supporting this, he's identified, he's looked at the soil maps and identified parcels that he thinks might meet this designation. And he needs some local knowledge to say, you know, is that, is somebody farming there? Does it seem like land that might, you know, that might be worth preserving if the landowner was interested? And then there's a sort of a process to get the the town to sign off on it officially. So I wanted to know what you all think. I'm willing to work on it if it's something we want to go forward with, but I, I would probably need somebody else. I mean, I looked at the maps and I could identify some of the places and knew what was going on there, but some of them I don't know anything about. I'll help you out. Okay. I'd love to work with that. Yep. Sounds worthwhile. Okay, great. Got it. Anything else? Uh, I do have one thing um, <clears throat> that uh, I was asked to bring to everyone's attention. Um, and, and let's see, this is, I, I, uh, so again, Donna Wiley asked me to, to bring this to everybody's attention. This is, I, 
it's it's called the Franklin County Farm and Food System Project. And this is something I think was put together in maybe 2015. I, I believe I emailed it to everybody. I don't know if anyone looked at it or is familiar with it. I don't know about that. And I'm embarrassed if you emailed it to me. Well, I'm almost certain I did. It was a very long document. I think I just emailed pages six and seven, which are a summary. Here's, here's you know, so this was... Uh, this was, I'll just read a, a paragraph here. It, inspired in part by Food Solution New England's 50 by 60 vision, in which New England produces 50% of its food by 2060, our research found that there would need to be substantial shifts in what Franklin County farmers grow and, their, the, and that their production would need to at least double in order to support this vision. Um, there would need to be 40,000 additional acres of land devoted to farming in Franklin County by 2060, um, some of which might be developed by bringing recently idle farmland back into production and by prioritizing uh, developing land for farming on prime farmland soils. So <clears throat> this is something I guess FERCOG put together at some point. And what all we're really being asked is not to be familiar with this whole document, but um, th the question is, are there specific barriers to increasing ag production in Waitley? Like, what are the barriers to growing product, to increasing production in Waitley? And is there anything town specific? Personally, I think this vision is a little, I mean, it's, you know, it, what, what a great goal, or maybe it's a good goal to work towards. I think it's a little bit unrealistic. Yeah. Um, aspirational. I'm sorry, say that again. I said aspirational. Aspirational, <laughs> that's the word. <laughs> yeah, that's a good um, word. I don't know where 40,000 additional acres of farmland are going to come you know, in in Franklin County, um, unless we unless we annex Hampshire County or something, but um, so you know this uh, this this document you know suggested that a way to increase farmland would be you know essentially to push. Honey, push would you leave the door open? Back. Okay. Oops, sorry. So I guess what, what Donna was looking for was, was what do we feel like are the barriers to increasing the acres of land that are being farmed in Waitley? And, and my feeling about it is kind of, you know, overall that, that production costs are too great to take chances on marginal lands. Um, uh, you know, and I, I, I don't know that we're going to find a whole lot of extra farmland by pushing field edges back and, and, uh, and all that, but I don't know. Does anyone else else have any thoughts on that? I do. 40,000 acres is, is uh aspirational that's a good word i like that uh i i think we're, we're heading to the limits right now just throwing on my usda hat is i can tell you that there's such a demand for land that marginal land that had not been in production for years is being considered to bring, bring back into production and that's where we're running into some compliance issues so uh uh, the, the the demand for farmland right here in the Connecticut River Valley is very high, whether that's prime land or some of the marginal land that hadn't been used before. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say something that's, I think, sort of the flip, you know, it's the other side of the coin of what you said, Doug, which is 
you know, we don't pay enough for food. If we paid more for food, you know, people might find ways to at least do some things a little bit more intensively or to figure out ways to, to use marginal land. But if you're not going to, you know, make a profit on it, you don't do it. And which I think is the other side of the production costs are too high and they're not, you know, they're not reliably covered necessarily by, you know, the price that you can get, um, particularly for something, you know, a crop that's marginal or land that's marginal. And I, sure. Yeah. I, I don't know how we fix that at the local level. Jim, how about you? Well, same thing. It's just, there's not enough land period. It's a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be less too with the development that's going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, we are as a town, we, we can probably supply 60%, but what about Springfield, you know, or Greenfield or something, you know, there's not, you know, are we going to start tearing down houses or paying more than for building lots to buy an acre of land now? So, you yeah, know, that's, that's the, that's the question. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a noble goal, but, how attainable i'm not quite sure about that but it does sound like you know th this is a this is not a new thing to say but you know it does sound like one thing that could you know be conveyed to to donna and the committees that she's on and to the open you know, the people thinking about open space at the FERCOG is you know that farmland preserve we can't make more land but if we can keep more of it in agriculture you know, then we're at least able to, more able to maintain production at the level it's at now, even if we can't bring it up to the level that we're feeding New England, you know, at 60%. Sure. A lot of it, a lot of it is just uh, looking for the future, you know, planning for the future. And it's, I seem it's hard to do that. You know, people don't think that way. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the biggest problem. You know. Okay, one final thing that I, I wanted to talk about, if I could move on, is our, our regular scheduled meeting for the AgCom. Now, I, I had it on the second, either the second or the third Tuesday of the month. Uh, I know we don't have a full group here tonight, but do you guys have an opinion on whether, whether we keep it at Tuesday? And, and if Tuesday, the second Tuesday or the third Tuesday? Or any other dates? Uh, any, you know, either is fine with me. Okay. Tuesday appears to be a pretty good day. Yeah. So, and I know the third Tuesday, there was a problem getting uh, a, a Zoom schedule because it's already been used. So probably the second Tuesday would be the one. Okay. Second Tuesday. And that's and a conflict for you sometimes, Margaret? That is sometimes a conflict for me. Yeah. Because uh, I've been doing some work with PVGA and I've been going to their meetings, which are often on the second Tuesday. But I can, um, I, you know, I don't have to do that forever. So I might miss yeah. a meeting uh, here and there, but. Um, I think okay. Okay. And I mean, this was an important meeting to have this this month, but. Do we need to hold these every me every month? I'm not sure. So. We certainly haven't. We've seemed to get by for the last year without having one, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, somehow we manage. So, um, I am curious right. how you all. I mean, maybe this. Maybe we should adjourn the meeting. But I'm, I am curious about how you all are and what the season, you know, looks like from this vantage point as far as demand or anything else. I'm interested in whether you all have heard from the. Um, community health clinic of Franklin County, whether there's vaccinations on your horizon? Yeah, I, well, I, I mean, uh, I, I can, I've already, I already got our, our entire farm already got our first shot. <laughs> That's and uh, good for you. The second, the, the second one is Wednesday. Um, oh, good. So yeah, that uh, I, I think there are other farms participating in that as well. That, that's good. So, yeah. Jim, how about you? 
Oh, uh, well, we're, we've made contact with them and they'll, they're caught waiting to call us. Yeah. And we're, we're not really that high priority, you know, <laughs> we're not working close together, it's just family right now. So, yeah. And then, um, so it's, I'm not in a rig rush. You know? you know, so, uh, you know, it looks like spring is coming. Maybe not tonight, but spring yeah. is, is yeah. headed our way. There's not much frost left. I know that much. <laughs> yeah. So we're kind of in mud season right now. So how's the outlook for this spring? So far, so good? <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. I know we're going to we're gonna trim back uh, some of the field crops that we're doing. Um, just, the, uh, you know, again, it, it kind of is the the costs of production are just for us, it's the costs of production are just too high to take a chance on, yeah. on land. We can't irrigate or, uh, um, you know, crops that are susceptible to diseases. We can't control reliably or rotate yeah. away from, um, it's risky. So yeah. 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 So, okay. On a personal note, at the beginning of February, I had kind of a disagreement with my garage door and I had a, a ruptured bicep tendon that, uh, let's see, it happened to me on Sunday, February 7th. I had surgery on the 12th. Um, I've been in physical therapy for the last three weeks. I'm going to be doing that for the next, oh, two months. And uh, it's a slow recovery, but I'm coming along. It's one of those things where it was an accident that happened so fast. I can't tell you, but you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of the name of that, that uh, company in Hadley that services and installs. <laughs> over <at Ford. laughs> Divine. Yes, that's correct. Oh, yeah, that's, um, that's, <laughs> that's the one. That's the one. And you know, after I hurt my arm, they sent a technician over. And he had the garage door fixed in 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of a, a kick in the pants. So, <laughs> but I'm sorry. It's good, good to hear live, you're on the mend. Live and learn. Yeah, I'm doing fine. I'll be good. So, all right. Is there anything else? Um, John, do you want me to reply to, to I mean, to Donna Wiley uh, specifically about our thoughts about the you know low wholesale prices for food and high production costs being a limit in that where yes. the committee is aware of okay i'll, I'll yes, just please. shoot here a quickie right then okay okay yep sounds good all right everyone good meeting it's been That's a while right. well um well. so it, i mean should, do we really should we how should we handle the next meeting? I mean, it seems like if something comes up, maybe we should kind of get in touch and, and schedule a meeting. Um, but maybe we don't really need to have next month's meeting planned. Yeah. Normally we have, well, in a normal year, we would have a meeting in April and then a final meeting in May. But if there's yeah. no, if there's no APRs, if there's no CPA topics um i don't think that we need to present anything at the town meeting so right you know and, and if you guys have anything where we do need a meeting or we have a complaint like sarah cooper uh then we'll have a meeting so uh so let's see do you want to schedule one for april let me look at my calendar here april the second Tuesday in April is April 13th. So I'll tell why you don't, what. Why don't, we, why don't we schedule it and why don't we yeah. just make a note to all kind of get in touch the week yep. before and see if it's necessary. Ag come. Got it. That sounds like a good plan. Okay. So I'm going to tentatively schedule an ag com meeting for Tuesday, the 13th at 7. Okay. 
Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. Anything else? All right. Well, good night. Bye. Okay. Thanks, everyone. You know, is anyone still there? <laughs> I'm still here. Me too. And Jim. Oh, did we? Did we actually call the meeting to order? Yes, I, I mean, heard you. Matter? I heard you clearly, Doug. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you you called the meeting to order at seven o three. Oh, well done. Okay. <laughs> All right, and and we voted to adjourn at at uh, seven fifty two. Fifty five. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. I forgot that. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, everyone. All right, good night. Good. good night. Bye. All right. Good night. Yeah.